One of the biggest problems with the RX 7800 GPUs is AMD's struggle to understand where it should put these GPUs in the RDNA 3 lineup. Pricing the 7800 XT for around $600 while delivering performance that barely outperforms the 6800 XT won't make it a good competitor to the RTX 4070. But this might change because AMD is supposedly making some big adjustments for the RX 7800 XT which can help the GPU to get more boost in performance and present itself to be a tough competitor to the 4070 for the same price. If you remember from one of my previous videos, I said that RX 7800 XT might fail the company as it was apparently using the Navi 32 GPU die which has significantly cut down specs compared to the RX 7900 GPUs. This was also seen in the simulated test by Igor Slab where the calculated RX 7800 XT performance didn't see a big uplift over the 6800 XT. However, this could come out to be totally different if AMD decides to use the Navi 31 GPU instead of Navi 32 which according to the latest leak by Moore's Law is dead might finally come out to be true. In his recent video, he shared a pic of the Navi 31 die which has some differences to the original one. Even though here you can see that the GCD and MCD dimensions are equal to what we have seen on the Navi 31 die, the total package size is much smaller than the default Navi 31. In comparison to the package size of 2612mm square of the original Navi 31 die, this one is just 1600mm square which is the exact package size of the Navi Navi 32. According to Tom, AMD did this as the Navi 32 still needs some time to get ready but I also think that AMD did this in order to equip the RX 7800 XT with the Navi 31 so it can have more compute units compared to the pre-assumed 60 CU on the Navi 32. Here two of the MCDs will be disabled just like the Pro W7800 GPU and the 7800 XT can still retain the 256-bit memory bus. This version of the 7800 XT will be much better than the Navi 32 based 7800 XT and currently this this prototype has been sent to various board partners for thermal testing. One of the most interesting things to note here is that if AMD can resize Navi 31 to fit the size of Navi 32, it can possibly use it to make the RX 7900MXT for high-end gaming laptops which can compete with the RTX 4080 laptops. Now before moving on, consider subscribing to the channel if you want to keep up with all the latest hardware stories going around the world as it can be quite challenging to grasp everything at once, by following this channel you will get the most interesting stuff delivered in just a few minutes. Next we have reports of Windows 11 unleashing its chaos on CPUs. Seemingly many users were facing high CPU usage while using Windows 11 and this issue has been in existence for almost one month. Finally Microsoft acknowledged it and blamed it on the Windows 11 file explorer. And Said that this happens when the view effective access button is selected and while you will receive the message of computing effective access, the results might not be displayed and the explorer.exe might still continue to use the CPU even after closing the advanced security settings dialog. Surprisingly, this bug was first seen on the Windows 11, 21H2 and 22H2 updates and this is not the first time this bug has caused such issues. Moreover, Microsoft acted pretty slowly and took a whole month for responding because this was not on their high priority list as it affected Windows Windows devices mostly in offices. Microsoft said that they are working to find a resolution for this problem and it should be probably fixed before the end of this month. Lastly, we have the first official leak about Intel's next-gen CPUs that unveils more information than we knew. The report comes from Bilibili.com which shared the official details from the company itself. According to the information provided, Intel is preparing a Raptor Lake refresh lineup for both desktop and laptop platforms. But there is a big change in the naming convention. As of now, you might be familiar with the change in naming convention Intel is going to introduce with the Meteor Lake family. But apparently, Meteor Lake is not the first one to use this naming convention. According to Intel, the Raptor Lake U refresh for laptops will use the core prefix by dropping I, which is similar to what we saw with the mainstream Meteor Lake CPUs. Except for that, the mobile Raptor Lake HX and the desktop Raptor Lake S refresh will follow the traditional naming convention. We wouldn't have possibly guessed this, but looks like the Raptor Lake U refresh might share some similarities with the Meteor Lake considering that the images shared by Intel have the same CPU branding as seen with the Meteor Lake CPUs. The crucial difference between the two series will be the ultra core branding as Raptor Raptor Lake U refresh will be void of that. Looks like both Intel and AMD are on their way to making sure that they use the most confusing names ever. But I don't get the reason behind all of this mindless stuff. The Meteor Lake naming convention looks even more messed up which you can learn about in this video right here. Watch that video and let me know what do you think about it in the comments below. Lastly, if you found this video informative then hit the like button and subscribe for regular updates like these. Also make sure to turn on the notifications to never miss any video in the future and I will see you in the next one.